All right, so um, let's talk a little bit about relapse and refractory myeloma. Um, so what do you, when somebody has evidence of relapse, what do you look at to try to help you decide what treatment to, to give? Yeah, um, so um, of course, um, you know, um, the, the cytogenetics, I try to do, um, you know, um, bone marrow biopsy. So um, how long from their initial transplant or diagnosis, if they were transplant ineligible, um, did, they, um, did they relapse, right? So time from initial diagnosis or time from transplant to relapse. Were they on, uh, on maintenance, right? Um, you know, some patients may say, you know, uh, not have been on, on maintenance treatment. Were they on maintenance? And what was the uh, maintenance at the time, you know, of relapse? And also, did they change? Did, they, did the cytogenetics change? Were there standard risk? And then, you know, and then they become, um, you know, a high risk. So those are all the, um, you know, the things I, um, you know, I look at. And of course, there are comorbidities. How well are they going to, um, you know, uh, tolerate, um, you know, treatment, uh, three drug versus uh, two drug treatment um, based on, um, on, 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 their, um, on their comorbidities. So those are some of the, um, you know, the things I, um, I, I look at in terms of, you know, should I reuse initial, you know, induction treatment? So if patient had, you know, um, really had a good response, VGPR, CR, and, and then um, had stayed um, on like four or five years, even three or more years um, on, um, you know, um, disease-free, you know, I, I can safely use their initial induction uh, treatment. Will they be eligible for a second transplant, right? Um, so if they've gone three or more years from yeah. their first transplant, um, absolutely, there's data out there for second autologous uh, transplant if they have cells and are able to, to, to uh, collect cells. Um, Always think of a, of a, of a clinical uh, trial for patients who are high risk and patients, um, you know, who relapse within a year from their transplant or even two years, those are considered super high, um, you know, risk. And um, I am a big fan of allotransplant. I still do it, you know, so. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so those are things I um, I also put in my uh, equation when are they are they eligible for an allo um, you know transplant and, um, and 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 so those are those are the things I, I, I look at. Great. How about so, you? Yeah, as you know, we we have um, so many agents to choose from. Yeah. You know, and we have the three major classes. We have the proteasome inhibitors, the immunomodulatory drugs, and now the monoclonal antibodies. And typically, it's, it is a ping pong approach between those three classes of drugs. Which ones are you going to compare? And so I agree, refractoriness to a, a re, a, an agent is the important thing, you know, in my mind, when, you're, when we're starting off for the first therapy after their initial induction. So a lot of our patients, like you and I just said, are on continuous lenalidomide. I will not bump up the dose of lenalidomide and add another agent. That, in my mind, is not a great regimen. For me, I switch at that point in time. And so typically, it's a class switch. So if they're rev refractory, for me, I either go to the next generation imid, like pomalidomide, and typically add something to that. And good, you know, there's good combinations. Typically, Darapalm is one of my favorite ones. But sometimes, I'll also choose carfilzomib or pomalidomide. But for whatever reason, if they've had toxicity to the imid and they're lenalidomide refractory, I might switch completely and just give a PI plus um, daratumumab or a monoclonal antibody. Like um, even bortezomib, if they haven't had it for a while, plus daratumumab. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's more recent data with using actually carfilzomib with the CD38 antibodies, which the, mm -hmm. some, of those, some of those studies are actually um, uh, quite convincing that that combination is really good in the LEN refractory population. How about you? Yeah, so, um, you know, um, you look at how, um, how did these patients relapse, okay? So patients can have what they call biochemical um, progression, right? Where they're totally asymptomatic. You're looking at the numbers. And um, of course, the, um, the, the time for um, uh, uh, your progression is when the monoclonal protein is 500 above the nadir, or their, their light chains um, is uh, um, at least um, 100 points above their, um, their nadir or, or in terms of the units, milligrams per liters, or uh, 10 milligrams per deciliters above their, their, their nadir. So I have, um, I've had patients who are, um, you know, just biochemical progression, totally asymptomatic, and uh, on land maintenance, uh, 5 milligram. 
And I, I increased the LAN and add dexamethasone. And I've had patients two years on, on that regimen without um, any progression. So it all depends on the nature of the progression, the symptom, symptom of the, um, of the um, progression. But definitely, you know, if they're not refractory to, 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 to LAN, I will do it. And again, the timing from their initial treatment VRD, DARA base. So DARA base is my actually my most second line, um, either DARA RD, DARA POM D. Um, IRD is also some patients like all oral drugs. So IRD is a is a is a good option for, for patients who don't want any um, IV or just like the oral. Uh, KRD also, if they're refractory to LIN, um, of course the DARA Velke, DARA POM, um, Carfizomy POM. Elopom, um, Cyborg D, Dara KD, um, Isopom Dex, you know, is, it was approved for, um, you know, uh, for both um, PI and um, and uh, and the um, imid um, refractory uh, setting. It could be either second line or third line um, prior uh, regimen. And um, so as you go down the road, you know, you have the Panobinostad, Velke Dex. Zilinexor, um, I think you'll you'll talk about that um, later, Dr. Martin. And of course, VD pays for like the younger patient, really aggressive disease uh, that um, you know you want to cyto reduce um, right away. And, and those are those are other options. So it's just so many options you can you know switch back and forth. Um, sometimes what I've done, if they uh, if we've used so many lines of therapy. Um, and they progress on three drugs, I can just remove one drug and add a different drug to the, uh, to the regimen. Say if they were on, uh, you know, carfizomib, palm dex, um, I will just remove the carfizomib and add daratumumab. Because uh, uh, palm is just so, so much, um, you know, tolerable. So we've, we've done that. Again, it's all patient, you know, um, um, patient directed and, um, and, and, and tolerability by, um, by patient.